Maya's particle instancer is a great way to achieve effects such as this one, when you've got many animated characters. It could be butterflies, it could be birds, or even people. If you've got lots of them, then you can't really animate each one by hand. Particles and the particle instancer come to our rescue here. This is an intermediate level tutorial, so you should have some experience with Maya and know your way around the interface. Also, I would recommend that you do the Particles Magic Wand tutorial before doing this one. As always, we'll need to begin by creating a project in Maya. So I'll go to the File menu and choose Project New. I'll create it in the current user's documents Maya projects, the default location. I'll give it a name, Butterfly Project. Click Use Defaults to populate all those fields with the correct folder names. Click Accept to actually create the project. I want to check in on my current working units. The default is centimeters, but I do want to make sure that that's what I'm working in. Window Settings Preferences Preferences. Settings. Working units are centimeters. That's great. I've got the grid set up with the Maya default grid, which is only 12 centimeters from center to edge. And that's fine because I'll be modeling something very small, a bug that's only a couple of centimeters long. But I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with the same grid settings. So let's go into Display Grid Options. Let's do a little bit of a variation on this. We'll set the length and width to 15 units from center to edge, a grid line every 10 units, and then subdivided by 10. So that I'll get a grid line every 10 units and a subdivision line every 10 divided by 10, or every one unit. I'll set the grid lines and numbers color and click apply. That just gives us a little bit better reference. I'd like to mention at this point that you shouldn't be dismayed if you open up the grid options and you see something unexpected in here. Sometimes you can get a situation where there's a mismatch between the actual grid settings in your scene and the values shown in the grid options dialog. The problem arises because the grid settings are stored in the scene and they're also stored in your user preferences. The upshot of it is that sometimes when you open this grid options dialog you'll see unexpected values in here. What you need to understand here is that the Grid Options dialog doesn't show you the current state of the grid in your viewport. It only shows you settings that you are about to apply in your scene. And unfortunately, within the Maya user interface, there is no way for you to numerically see what your current grid settings are. So that's a bit surprising. But uh, after many years of working with Maya, I finally figured out the issue here. So don't let it freak you out if you see your grid options have different values than what you see in the viewport. That's normal. Because we'll be using the particle instancer later, we need to build the model facing in the positive x-axis in the world. And you can see here the orientation of the world axes. So this is the x-axis. So I'll need to make my butterfly facing in the positive x-axis. The conventional way of building a character is to make it face in the positive z direction. But we're working with the particle instancer here, and so we've got to obey slightly different rules. So we'll build it in the positive x direction. If you've got a character already built that's facing in some other direction, you'll need to face it towards positive x and then freeze its transforms. I want to go to my top view, so I'll tap the space bar, get it a little bit closer, and maximize the top view. So I'll be creating my character facing in positive X. The body will be just about maybe three centimeters long and centered exactly on the origin. I'll use the CV curve tool to construct a curve in the top view and then revolve it to make a surface so that my first and last points on the curve land exactly on this line with a z value of zero, I'm going to turn on snap to grids in the status line here. 
Then I can go to the Create menu and choose the CV Curve tool. You might want to go into the options for the CV Curve tool just to make sure that Curve Degree is set to 3. And if it's not, you can reset the tool and that'll reset it to 3 cubic, meaning that you'll be able to create curved lines. Close the tool settings. So I need to create the first and last points directly on a grid point. And I also need to click a couple of times to create the first and last points. Because of the way that NURBS works, I want to click here just once to create the first point, and then pause for a moment, and then click again to create another one there. Then I can proceed to make more points anywhere I wish. I'm just roughing this out. We'll add more points later. And I'll click here again twice. And then press Enter to complete the curve. Then I can go into Control Vertex mode. Right click and choose Control Vertex. And use the Move tool to move points around. I don't need snapping on anymore, so I can turn it off. So we can start to shape up our bug character. The important thing here is that the points at the ends need to have a Z value of zero. If I move these points away from the axis line, then I'm going to have serious issues with my revolve later. So I'll press Z to undo that. One way to easily make sure that these points are all at a Z value of zero is to simply select them all. And up here in your status line, you've got X, Y, and Z transform values. You can just type it in. If your move tool is selected and the input line is set to absolute transform mode, then if I have a problem here, I can just type in zero for the Z axis and I can send those points home. Okay, so we're just going to quickly shape up this curve. I want to add more points here. So I'll go and right click and choose curve point. And I can choose locations on the curve. And then go into the surfaces menu set and choose edit curves, insert not. That'll add another point at that location. We get dropped back into object mode, but if I right click and go into control vertex, I see there's another point there now. You may notice that your knot or control vertex is not added at the exact location that you clicked. That's intentional. Maya is trying to preserve the shape of your curve, and so to do that it had to place the point slightly elsewhere. So I'm just going to add a little bit more detail to this once again, and I can choose multiple curve points at once actually by holding down the shift key, and then insert knot, and then go back into control vertex mode. So I'll just take a moment here to shape up a little butterfly. He needs to have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. I've just taken a few seconds to add more CVs and move them around to change the shape of the curve. Go back to object mode and save the scene. File save scene as, and I'll call it butterfly01.ma.